One in five suffer. Erase the stigma. Brain difference is not a crime. Mental health isn't just your problem. It's our problem. And now, Mental Health Monday with Marla and Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Mental, Mental Health, health Mondays. Mondays. Um, I'm Marla. And, and I'm Dave. And don't adjust your screens. I'm actually here in the studio. I know it seems weird, but I did make it back. And welcome back, by the way. We're glad to have you. Uh, before I even start, I have to always remind everybody that um, we're very happy to bring this program to you in, con in, in partnership with NAMI, um, San Fernando Valley, and Loving Beyond Reason. And, and mental health is super important. It's a passion that Dave and I have to begin to break the stigmas and break the silence and erase the stigmas. Go. We have a lot of uh, great things planned for you today. Of course, we have the poll question break, which is always fun and informative. We have the Mental yeah. Health Minute, which is educational and informative. And it will help you. It kind of helps uh, break down the stigma associated with mental illness. Our guest today Most is Beth Boyd. Uh, Beth is the NAMI. Hey, there you go. Yay. She deserves an applause. <laughs> exactly. Yay. Beth is the NAMI uh, San Fernando Valley Board Secretary. She's an instructor for QPR, which is a suicide prevention class and mental health first aid call, a helpline volunteer and family support group facilitator. Wow, she Dave, does a lot. You must be a singer. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. One breath. I want to remind everyone that uh, the NAMI experts, both paid and the volunteers, uh, provide an environment showing unity in our community and collaboration for a common cause. That cause is mental health. Ah, wow, that's a lot. We're going to have a great show for you today. When we come back, our conversation with Beth Boyd. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. Hey guys, listen up. Learn something. All right, we're back with Beth Boyd. Beth, uh, welcome to the show. Mental Health to Monday. Welcome Mental Health Monday. Yes. Oh, thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as usual, there's always a, any time that we're, we're, we're always honored, number one, to receive the information and to discuss and to have in studio with us the members of NAMI, mm -hmm. um, whether San it be Fernando Valley, San Fernando yes. Valley, whether it be board members or whether it be um, those who are running programs and volunteers. Mm -hmm. But you in particular, uh, the thing that I want to point out is that everyone has a story and a reason and everyone's reason tends to resonate differently with everyone else. And so I want to start with your story. Okay. What is the, what, what, tell us what the impetus was that your attention, number one, to mental health. Oh, well, my attention got uh, focused very clearly by my daughter, okay. our daughter. Uh, yeah, she's had, uh, started having some mental health issues in, junior high and it just did you got know at that point it was mental worse. health or was Not it just in that point it was just a behavioral issue uh, and, yeah. and, and before you go there do you have more than one child is she your only child She's our only okay baby. wow yeah. mm, your baby mm -hmm. so you started to notice things mm -hmm. were a little uh, yeah. different because mm -hmm. we call mental health challenges brain, brain differences, differences on yeah. this right. particular show right. so you started noticing some differences in mm -hmm. junior high and and they just got more and more severe but it was only in college that we started to see stuff that was clearly uh, going to require some professional help. And so by the time she got to college was when she first uh, you first approached getting an actual formal formal diagnosis? Yep. Mm, what were yep. some of the issues Our surrounding that? Dorm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> freshman dorm calling me at night and crying and saying, I can't stop crying, Mom. What do I do? Mm. So. Mm, now, was she in state or was she? Nope. Oh, wow. Nope. She was so, uh, I don't know, 300 miles away. So, but happily, it was my school. I knew where the f the, uh, met the help was. Yep. Yeah. I knew where awesome. the health center was. It was only a block away. Okay. And it was 10 minutes to 9, mm. and they close at 9. Wow. Whoa. So you remember the but exact I time. Know, I know that her one of her classmates from high school, who I knew, lived upstairs in the mm. dorm. And I said, you get Philip. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and. He came down and he got on the phone and he said, "Yes, Mrs. Boyd." <laughs> <laughs> right. 
and and I've just walked him through it. Okay, so now stop. I have to ask you this. So you said at that point, so this 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 timeline now is from junior high to college, but you said you walked him through it. How did you yeah, know? Because most we, people we floundered as parents. <laughs> Exactly. And, and, we, uh, and my mother was a psychiatric nurse, and even still, we were like, we, we, we couldn't figure it out. So, how, so tell us, was, did you have a background? Did you, how did you know what to do to even begin to assist her? Remotely, by the way. I, I think it was pretty miraculous that I okay. knew what mm. to do. It just suddenly came to me. I, know, mm. I knew she had to go get help. I knew the help was there and that she needed to get her herself over there but you uh, didn't have but but she you she didn't have a diagnosis at that point no she okay didn't. so that was the beginning of you actually seeking professional yeah. assistance to help yeah. her manage her issues had become emotionally critical mm -hmm. now one of the things that we uh give the option on this particular show is mental health mondays uh, we don't like to focus on diagnoses because for us the diagnosis is just the road map to the type of help that you require Mm -hmm. uh, for whatever brain difference that you're dealing with. Uh, so I don't know if that's something that you want to share. That you're um, welcome to. but Yes, yeah. you're welcome to share. I just want to let you know that yeah. up front. Yeah. So what, if, if you don't mind. Real what briefly, we, uh, she, she, over the next couple of years, she was diagnosed with some, uh, every different mental health group that there is except schizophrenia, mm. bipolar, depression, double depression, a couple of anxiety things. disorder, uh, and yeah, right, uh, all uh, of that, uh, mood disorders, all, all sorts of stuff, and had different medications given to her. She was on lithium. Now, did the same yeah, doctor go on. through all those different diagnoses, no. or different no. different doctors were giving different diagnoses? Yep. Mm. yep. And so, when did you find out, and when were you comfortable enough? And a lot of people don't realize that as well that when you're trying to find the appropriate diagnosis, you keep going, especially as a parent who knows the characteristics of their child and what's actually happening, and they're in the home and, and experience way more than the doctors do. We can yeah. tell when some of those characteristics that, that they're describing describes our child, uh, or, it, or if, you're, if you're dealing with it on your own, it might describe you, and you can tell when it does not. Um, so how did that process work out for you, getting to the right diagnoses? We saw all of it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she had all of she it. Was, she, uh, she had multiple. She, mm -hmm. was, she was showing yeah. Different, so, yeah. uh, different symptoms at different times. And, and so what diagnosis had, did you actually settle on? Because that's kind of important for the therapy. Oh, well, in the end, we probably, it, well, I don't know, A. Mm. She was over eighteen, right? Oh, okay. Ah. I see that. Okay, so that what she said that's super important. There's right a lot there. to unpack. Now, well that that in particular is something that I want to really just really put my finger on and point and say what Beth just said is essential. She was over the age of eighteen. So for those of us, we fall in that category as well. They're adults and they're their HIPAA, their privacy, regardless yeah. of their their crisis, regardless of, of what their relationship going through, to us, it doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. If they don't include you in their therapies and in their process, then good luck. They have <laughs> literally that's so 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 we'll get to that at some point because trust is huge mm -hmm. um, with with how we approach our children, especially our adult children. Now, how was the relationship between you guys as parents and your daughter uh, impacted throughout this time period? We were very close. Mm. Yeah, she relied on us. Mm. Uh, so that wasn't... That's a blessing, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I, I mean, I, I, that's something I, I almost didn't even need to ask, only because when she was at her lowest low, the one thing Beth said is she called. And mm -hmm. and e even if it ten minutes to nine, nine nine the clinic closes or the the help source would no longer that, be available. That's an indicator. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So for sure. So we're gonna hear more of Beth's story. Um, and also, of course, we gotta get to how this led you to Nami. So we got a lot to talk about. We'll be back right after this break. <laughs> when Dave and Marla get together, it's hot. Psycho. Nutcase, schizo, you may not realize it, but these terms 
often used to describe someone with a mental health condition, can be very harmful. In a country where one in five people are affected by a mental illness, it's time for all of us to step up and change the conversation. When the discussion on mental illness focuses on fear instead of hope, people struggling with these conditions get caught up in the judgment and shame attached to them. They become lost in all the talk and harmful words and they may not get the support they need, but we can help by directing our loved ones to places like NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness for life-saving resources. Just because someone's struggle isn't obvious on the outside doesn't mean they aren't hurting on the inside. We need to see the person, not the condition. Join me, pledge to be stigma-free. It's time for the Mental Health Minute with Marla and Dave. Suicide, suicide, uh, suicide, suicide causes Marla. immeasurable pain and suffering and loss to individuals, families, and communities nationwide. On average, 112 Americans die by suicide each day. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among 15 through 24-year-olds and more than 9.4 million adults in the United States had serious thoughts of suicide within the past 12 months. In many cases, suicide is preventable. Seek help immediately if you or someone you know shows signs of one or more of these behaviors. Uh, talking about wanting to die or to kill yourself. Looking for a way to kill yourself. Talking about feeling hopeless or having no reason to live. Talking about feeling trapped or in unbearable pain talking about being a burden to others. Increasing the use of alcohol or, or drugs, acting anxious or agitated, behaving recklessly, sleeping too little or too much, withdrawing or feeling isolated, showing rage, or talking about seeking revenge, displaying extreme mood swings. If you or someone you know needs help, please call the NAMI suicide uh, line, which is 877-727-4747. And as always, in, in an emergency, please call 911. This message is brought to you by NAMI San Fernando Valley and, and Loving, Loving Beyond, Beyond Reason. Reason. David is a thinker. I never do anything without thinking about it first. Marla is a feeler. I basically wear my personality on my scene. But when Marla and Dave get together, it's like a match dancing with a firecracker. firecracker. <laughs> so Beth, you're in the in the private sector. Mm -hmm. What was what did you have a career that had to do with health or nursing or yep. wellness? Yep, I, w I was. Uh, I'm, I have a career as a, as a hospital chaplain. Wow. Mm. So now and uh, and, and as a chaplain for a hospital, uh, do you have to keep things, I guess, uh, generic when it comes to spirituality versus or can you be more specific when it comes to spirituality based on, you know, the different religions that people might come to the hospital? My, my job, practicing my job, the way that I, I thought about it was that I'm trying to help you, Mrs. Patient or Mr. Patient to use your spirituality to help you with cool. what you're going through. Mm. So I'm not here to impose a darn thing. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help you discover the riches you have already mm. right, in your background. So uh, and it's not necessarily religious. A lot of people, the, the biggest group here in California is the not affiliated. Right, right. right. So, mm -hmm. so, um, so it's not going to be religious necessarily, right. but it, it will be connecting you with a deeper connection of self. Yeah. Yeah. Something and a, and a belief and a system that you power. have exactly to be able to help get you through. So she's not here for conversion. But speaking of conversion, mm -hmm. so with your daughter, um, how did I know that eventually you found your way to NAMI? Mm -hmm. Was your was your private um, experience as a chaplain instrumental? in helping you or t getting you to NAMI or even taking on the roles and positions that you later have taken on within this organization? Yeah, it's, it was a good background to have to take on these these roles. Uh, but the way that, that I got to it was because my daughter told me about it. So, so, so your, your daughter, daughter told you about, about NAMI. NAMI before you did. Wow. And was that because uh, they had uh, advertisement or... Was it peer-to-peer -peer uh, support? On, on campus? No, this was much later. Uh, so I didn't find NAMI until I was uh, I was retired for five years. Wow. Uh, so 
So it was much, much. So longer. okay. So now I have to go back. I can't. I'm sorry. I, mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a time traveler, so I can't skip that gap. Okay. Um. So you 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 told us that you 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 reached out. You got your daughter help and diagnosis and 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 support, and so she began to manage her own mental health challenges mm-hmm. over the years. Over yeah. the years, it took a long time. Right. Give us like so so twenty years. Twenty. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so well past yeah. college. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So at that point. As she's on her her journey of healing and self awareness and acceptance, she finds out about Nami, mm-hmm. and you say light bulb, <laughs> correct? <laughs> well, I had been looking around after my um, uh, retirement for a good place to put in about twenty hours a week of volunteer work, mm. and I looked for a good five years. When Jennifer said to me, "Well, why don't you try Nami? I, what is that?" I said. And she told me. Wow. I, I actually want to go back a little bit further, um, if I may, um, because a lot of things that are being implied are just really jumping out at me. And that is, <laughs> number one, first of all, I'm still stuck way back on the various diagnoses that uh, you guys and your daughter mm-hmm. uh, pursued and that she received. Um so do you think it's important to settle down on a single diagnosis or because you said that from your perspective, there were characteristics in just about everything mm-hmm. all of the therapists were saying yeah. that might apply. And so because of that, did that seem burdensome to your daughter as the patient? Because in other words, if one one doctor says you have bipolar and one doctor says you have something else and right. do, another doctor says everything in the spectrum other than schizophrenia, does that seem like, man, I have all these issues? I, I'm looking at it, and, and it's a strange thing to do as a parent. Yeah. But as I was watching it, her developing all this stuff, I kept thinking, she is getting training for something really big. Mm. Wow. That's a very enlightened perspective. She had perspective. a full spectrum training from that perspective. Wow. So her she experiential journey was preparing her in your mind, and, th- and that's how you looked at it. Yeah. She was being faced with all of this because it's literally like in-life training. Now, yeah. do you think that's an integration of uh, you being a person of faith? It might be, uh, Your yeah. daughter also, <laughs> I guess, as a, as a family. You guys yeah, are a family of faith. It. So... Yeah. Uh, that is something else that she was looking to. Did she internalize it in the same way that you did? Well, not exactly, because mm. she's a different person. Right. But, right. but very similarly, she she has helped many people and has uh, received mm. lots of awards. Th- and that was wow. what I was going to say. That and is this, so amazing. At this point, mm-hmm. that was going to be my question. It sounds like she herself has become an advocate, and I was going to ask, is, is that, has she taken this on to be someone who's on the forefront of using her voice and her experience and her... Yes. To help others. Yes. Okay, that's amazing. That is amazing. amazing. I'm very proud of her. <laughs> she awesome. And you know what? We are too. We're exactly. proud of you as well. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I have so to mama's just... just catching up. I have <laughs> to, when, when we say that, you know, when Dave and I keep referring to Beth in the plural, there's a Mr. Boyd as well, and he's not on camera, <laughs> but he is here he's, in support. He's and very supportive. Yes. He is in studio. And he is in studio, and we're, and we're very glad to, to have them both here. Absolutely. So when we get back, I'm going to talk to... We're gonna to talk to Beth and we're going to we're going to specifically focus in on your role at, at NAMI and get into um, what that looks like and what your plans are and what you find to be phenomenal about your your uh, advocacy and your work with NAMI. More with Beth Boyd when we come right back after this next segment. Don't move. <laughs> All right, it's time for the poll question break. You see, the music got all fun and festive. <sighs> Last week, uh, we uh, reminded you that, or we informed you, uh, it's estimated that 1.6% <laughs> of the adult U.S. population actually has BPD. But that number may be as high as 5.9% because a lot of these things go undiagnosed. The question was, what percentage of all people in the U.S. diagnosed with BPD are women. Oh, your oh. options were 25%, 50%, or 75%. Beth, what's your what's your best guess? Jeez. <laughs> Just women with BPD. I wasn't 25, 50, or 75%. So what BPD? percent of all yeah, what 25. percent? 
25. 25. Actually, it's 75 percent of people diagnosed in the U.S. with BPD are actually women. And I, and I know why. Why I is that? I can give you a little tidbit. There you go. Okay. The, little, the little tidbit is <laughs> that generally borderline personality disorder is a diagnosis given to women. And when men suffer from some of the same symptoms, they're generally diagnosed with narcissistic personality Boom, disorder. Boom. There you go. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, the new poll question is this. A little tidbit before. Unfortunately, in most places across the country, the prison system has become the largest mental health facility by de facto. What percentage of state prisoners have a recent history of mental health condition? A, 11%. B, 17%. Or C, 24%. Oh, I want to vote. Oh, wait. Where can you vote? You can vote on any of our social media sites. Make sure that you tune in, log on, and cast your vote. We want to hear your voice. And we're going to get right back to the show. Vote. <laughs> All right. We're back that quickly. You didn't know that <sighs> about Borderline? I did. Did you know that, just a little another fun fact, did you guys know that the character um, Glenn Close on mm -hmm. Fatal Attraction was actually done based on the study of a borderline. Right so around the time that borderline personality was first entered into, into the into DSM. DSM. Yeah, exactly. That was one of the first characters. I, I As know. was uh Jenny from Forrest Gump. Forrest she was Gump, she was the right. yeah, she mm. was yeah, there's the external borderline and then and, and okay. Anyway, you can DM us. We'll give you more info. <laughs> <laughs> and right quick, uh on our on our segment before this, uh the break where we were doing the mental health minute, um I had asked Beth kind of off camera uh, was the NAMI suicide line and hotline, and you were telling me that it she is... This is a warm line. Not. It's a warm line. A warm line. Now yes. explain well, the difference for us. Well, hotline, you'll have somebody who's going to answer the phone right then mm -hmm. and, and talk you through it. NAMI is a group of people who have lived experience either in their own families mm. or... Personally. Or, per, or they, they themselves have, or both. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're trained professionals, but, I mean, we're trained amateurs but we are we are not professionals mm. so that's not the place to get professional help so it a hotline has an actual therapist standing by a that's professional right. to be able right. to manage it on right. in the moment mm -hmm. right. okay uh thank you for that clarification okay. um so let's get back to uh how first she made her all, way to the board exactly, and, exactly. <laughs> okay so as a as a helpline that's what we call it help Helpline. there you go there you go we can give resources we can um, we can try to talk to you and help help you think it through, but but we're not gonna there to give advice mm. and recommendations. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, N not not that not in the way a professional would. Okay, all right. Well, thank you but for that clarification I got again. Loads of resources I can give you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like Marla was saying, uh, you told us that uh, your daughter introduced you to Nami, mm -hmm. and. Uh, what was your first job there when you first were introduced? Or did you just come on as a volunteer? Or Because yeah. you well, said you were looking for some place I to volunteer. The way I found it was, yeah, I was looking for a place to volunteer, and she suggested that. So I got on, on uh, the website, and I found uh, NAMI San Fernando Valley, and I found that there was a speaker meeting. And when I went to that speaker meeting, there was Jim Randall, who <laughs> you have interviewed yes. a couple of, of uh, times ago. And... Uh, <laughs> And and Jim said, "Well, sure, yeah, we can we can use you. We, we can, sure, uh, I got a committee meeting coming up tomorrow night. Come on over." And I did, and that uh, so I was suddenly on the uh, the special projects committee. Nice. There you go. And from there, he said, "Well, why don't you join the board?" So I did. And I, you know, I got I put in my application for the board and got elected, and pretty soon I was. In charge of a lot more. <laughs> okay, so let, so let me ask, so I have so, some specifics to ask you, Beth, yeah. that I don't, I don't think I really have ever really understood. So NAMI San Fernando Valley, and I'll say this to the audience as well, is a chapter of NAMI. That's so right. that is the chapter that David and I are affiliated with and belong to. Mm -hmm. How many board members constitute your chapter on any given oh, period? Ty typically 11. Okay. Yeah. Board members. Then. Board members. So there's yeah. 11 board members that make up a functional mm -hmm. board for a for you for for that's, our chapter. Yeah. That's our And so how do you be? You just said that you you put in an application and mm -hmm. you were elected. Mm -hmm. So tell us the process right quick. And this is just me asking for real off cuff. How do you become a board member? Okay. 
Well, you're talking to the board secretary, so I just happen to know the bylaws. <laughs> I, well. I thought you might. <laughs> and we are in the in the midst of a board election, so if somebody wants to be on the board, um, they uh, they need to be a member of NAMI, and then they would get uh, all the board members. I mean, all the members of our affiliate were sent an application form. And they would fill it out, and it is due by the fifteenth of this month. Mm. So you only got a couple days, a folks. Few days, yeah. <laughs> so is there is there is it one of those things where because you Nami is an actual volunteer um, uh, organization, are you ever rejected? <laughs> Do, does and yes. I'm okay. So that's, and I'm not yeah I'm not getting into that, but I, I just want to know. Like mm -hmm. in other words, so a lot of times people feel like. If I just want to do it, then, you know, uh, so is there, are there actual roles to be filled? Well, the, 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 the president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary, yes, but all, virtually all boards have those four. But that, mm -hmm. that's all. After that, it's just uh, per need. Lo of what loads of things to get involved in. Got it. Fundraising, teaching, uh, <coughs> running classes. Yeah, so now I was um, in one of those big four. You're the secretary, as you mentioned. <laughs> and, and it sounds like even as I was just naming all the things that you do for NAMI uh, San Fernando Valley, it would seem uh, like you wouldn't have a moment to yourself. You do quite a few things. Mm -hmm. And so when you said that you first started off with the idea to maybe volunteer 20 hours. It seems like, as I'm reading the things that you do, you are well past 20 hours right now. You, you gotta, <laughs> Her husband is sitting <laughs> over, he's and saying, you, he's behind the he's camera, saying, and he's yes, going, Yes, that's true. Yes. <laughs> Hello, I would like to meet my wife again. I love her. <laughs> and I mean, so. We've, we've been at it for seven years now, and intend to. Continue. And, and is Mr. Boyd also, or he just a support for you and, and all your efforts? He's okay. very much of a supporter. Yes. Nice. Okay. Now, has your, he has, has your his own interests and, of and course. Uh, volunteers. Of Obviously, course. you're at the top of the list because he's here. So, <laughs> yeah. yes, main exactly. Interest. That's a good thing. His <laughs> main yeah. interest. Uh, so now, has your daughter actually come back to teach one of the classes? Has she been a guest speaker? or She doesn't live here. She's... Uh, 500 miles away. Oh, okay. So, yes, she has done that where she in lives. Her, in her local yeah. chapter, yes. Yeah. yes, mm -hmm. Awesome. I have permission to share her story, but I hesitate oh. to go. No, I, 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 want, in, you to, I you know. want you to touch on as much of that as you want to, so please, please mm -hmm. do. Yeah. So, she, so she shows she has, So, but right. So as far as where we're going, where you're going with NAMI, when we come back from this break, we're going to be about, to, we're going to close out but we want you to be able to share what is most important to you when it comes to your service with NAMI when we come back from this break. Bad. What are you doing? Hurt. Worthless. Don't, don't trust them. They'll hurt you. You're worthless. It's pointless. When the pain of schizophrenia meets hope, everything can change. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. And we're back with Beth Boyd. Beth, you were saying uh, before we went to the last break <laughs> that you had permission to share some of your daughter's story. Give us some of the highlights. Well, I think I, I have, and I, th I think that's you've as touched far on as enough. I'd yeah. like to go. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, but j just you know, say we're very proud of her. And oh we'll man, it, it sounds like she, you guys had <laughs> so, quite a journey, and it's yeah. always awesome to hear that the, jur the journey ends uh, well. And yes. So and and that's the other part. This is not a hopeless situation mm. when you get a diagnosis of mental illness. Mm -hmm. That 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 means you've got a challenge. But then doesn't everybody? Exactly. Right. And this this is yours. Okay, you are going to have a very satisfying and useful life if if that's what you're going to go after. There is hope. There is mm. always hope for for virtually everybody. There are very few people who who really get end up anymore. Uh, in the horrible situations that we used to see hundred years ago, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so we are, we are, we are all band. We've all band together. We are a community 
and we're a community bound by um, determination, in information, and hope. And so, yes. Beth, you've brought that to us again today. We're never disappointed at the information that comes forward. We love hearing from all of you guys um, at NAMI. Yeah. All those who want to share, um, you're, welcome. you're welcome to you're, come share right this is here your house Mental as much Health as our Mondays. House. Um, next week, we have a special treat. We've got Brandy Norwood coming in, and she's going to be doing um, two, two parts. So episode one will be live in studio next week right here um, at um, Mental Health Mondays. And so... It's going to be really important, by the way, that I have you guys, if you haven't gotten her latest album, B7, do that. Our guest has been Beth Boyd, and she has shared a story of uh, starting off with the challenge that she uh, said and turned into a, a testimony of hope uh, that then turned into a long a life, of service. life of service. And so we really appreciate that. We appreciate you, Beth, everything you. that you do for us over at NAMI San Fernando Valley. Uh, we've had a great time and a great conversation. And thank you for uh, bringing in thank the you. Aw most awesome chauffeur. I'm going to try and steal him. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been Mental Health Mental Mondays. <laughs> and, and look what just happened on the side of my hat. Vote. Ooh. Make sure you get out there Make and do sure it. Yeah. It's your vote. duty. Vote. It's don't your duty. Forget and a lot of people don't realize vote. that there are always mental health issues that we need support for politically as well. Make that part of your priority. Support the community. We'll see you guys next week.